these prisoners. I have a relief, R-E-L-E-A-F, uh, fun projects. I have three projects, one with Dan and um, some music projects that are going to go huge. But we want to make a relief fund and give um, the Dianas, the Erics, the Randys, and the Jeffs um, a fund. We want to give you a restitution fund that's going to be put away safely and you can have for food and shelter as our gift for you being in jail for our mama, our plant. And so Hemp Hemp Hooray. And uh, more than anything, we have to uh, we have to turn our prisons into schools. And There's something happening here. I'm Rodimus Para, and I was actually Grasshopper from the original Kung Fu television series back in the mid-70s. I've known Jeff for over 40 years now, and I know him to be a consummate artist, photographer, also a man who has been around the cannabis movement since the very beginning as an activist doing what he can and a few years ago he started working on freeing the 420 POWs he, I had been seeing the things he'd done, the video uh, helping people get out of jail, you know, it's amazing so I decided to help because I think it's a very important movement to be a part of I believe the karma of the cannabis industry will not be clean really, until all of the 420 POWs are out of jail, serving time for ridiculous sentences that have nothing to do with the world we live in today. So I want to loan my help and my resources to make this happen, and I hope that you will do the same thing. Thanks. It all started back in 2015. There's something happening here. I've also re-embraced the marijuana as just another way to recognize the plant, the mama. And um, and Randy, how how long were you in jail for? Uh, uh, hi, Jeff. Um, Twenty-seven years. Uh, I I got a life sentence in 1987. I took my case to trial. There was no. They hadn't even found one bud, one seed, one stem in my case. So I took my case to trial and ended up getting convicted of brought in marijuana from Columbia. And so I uh, ended up with a life sentence. It took me three decades and I overcame it uh, in 2014. Here we go. that marijuana is the medicine and no one should be locked up for any amount of time for any dealing with that plant. You don't appreciate your freedom until it's taken away from you. And, and tell, them about, tell them about the day you and I met. In prison, um, Jeff come down to uh, Jefferson City Correctional Center and uh, Boy, my arms are tired. <laughs> yeah, you flew down. <laughs> <laughs> and we set up, and he had a few problems getting there, so I, and we, it ended up running pretty late. And we set up right there in the visiting room and uh, did a uh, recap of everything in, in my case, uh, pretty much. And he let me know a lot of the news about uh, even the, uh, you probably seen a picture holding the book with the hemp on the front. I was taking oh, yeah. there as well. I'm hoping is that it um, actually brings awareness to people of uh, the harm it's doing. Not only the guys that are locked up, but their families. And I think the money they're spending keeping these guys locked up for something that the Lord put here for us to use it just don't make sense. Do you ever think this day would happen, or 22 years ago that that it happened that he was put away? I believe it when it when it when he gets get uh when he gets sentenced to life and then finding out years later that it was life without parole, I couldn't believe it. Uh, not in America for for going jail for life without parole for pot. I could never I never got it. 
what happened in New York to Vegas. But um, we were going to have Diana Marquez come on just to talk about what it's like to be on the CARES Act. She was one of the people that is serving 30 years for uh, her first offense for marijuana. Diana, out, Diana's out date is not until 2031. She has another 10 years to go. Uh, we assisted with helping um, amend her clemency petition and we even got a notice from Office of the Pardon Attorney saying, you don't meet the criteria. So that was very emotional and um, frankly um, heart-wrenching, but we got a compassionate release file for Diana Marquez. Um, law professor Colin Miller from University of South Carolina and his students did it. And yesterday they called Diana in and told her to come in and get her ankle monitor removed because she won her compassionate release. Yeah, and so know. she is free and anywhere just a few minutes diana just say hi and and, and hello to, to jeff and tommy chong and the gang and how it must feel to know that you finally have that ankle monitor off of oh, you man. Oh, man. first of all i just want to say thank you to you all for inviting me i am i i can express what is the, the joy that i feel in my heart right now i still having uh heaviness in my heart. I can I can still believe that I'm a, I'm free, completely free. You should see me yesterday screaming, jumping in my little grandsons were scared. I said, what happened, grandma? What happened? I said, I am free, mijos, I am free. And they were so happy. It says, oh, now we're gonna be able to go to the streets. We're gonna go able to go to the park and go everywhere. So they were so excited together with me. So the first person that I called, it was my daughter, but since she was working, I called you, but I know you were so busy and uh, I just start calling somebody for a ride to take me to the headway house because they give me an hour to cut the monitor and release me. And I said, oh, I'm on the way. And yeah, I was there, but an hour. But I'm still, I'm still can feel the vibrator in my uncle. I, I can keep looking my, my uncle like, feeling the, the the machine they used to vibrate whenever they want to call me or something and, and I can still feel it and last night I wasn't able to sleep well because I wake up like around four putting the pillow between my legs like my both ankles do not rub the backs I say wow I don't have that stuff no more it's something unbelievable but uh, I'm so thankful and grateful with you all and for the almighty lord Yes, thank you so much. I'm very thankful and grateful. Thank you, and we'll bring you back on. I think um, I'm Tommy Chong only has a short period of time today to be with us, so um, Diana will hear more from you and Eric McCauley, who also won a, a compassionate release and got uh, the award at the Emerald Cup. But um, Jeff, I'll throw it back to you, and Tommy probably has some words that he'd like to share with you, Diana, and Eric, and all of you guys. So. We'll, we'll be quiet and, and let the show proceed. Did you go to sleep, Jeff? Or how about just Feliz Año Nuevo? <laughs> Man, new life, new year, new everything. I'm so, so excited. Thank you so, so much for your wishes. Thank you. So everybody, Feliz Año Nuevo to Diana and all the prisoners that are coming home. Um, for me, uh, when I go inside a prison and I What it was like when I was my first prisoner to film in prison was Jeff, Sir Jeff Mazansky, and there he is. Hi, Jeff. Hi, how you doing? Um, the, the moment that I saw their face and I knew they were going back in was so unbelievably, I can't express my emotions. And so we have several people, um, Amy included, Tommy included, and Jeff included. Um, that were in jail, okay, that, that have seen the no daylight for, for weeks and days. 
Um, Tommy, give a shout out to uh, Diana and to Jeff, please, and to, and to share your feelings about um, even yourself going in and out and what it's like to welcome them home. Well, <clears throat> that, that is a, a beautiful feeling, knowing, knowing that you're going home, first of all. It's kind of bittersweet because what happens in, in, in prison is that about a month before you're released, everybody kind of stops communicating with you. You almost become like you're, 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 you, you no longer exist because uh, they have to stay and, and you're leaving. And therefore, uh, you don't get the privilege of, of sharing their intimate thoughts or lives anymore. And and uh, it was it was bittersweet. Uh, you know, I was extremely extremely happy to, to be free. When you're being released, it's gonna it takes a lot to keep you there. You know, because you're off the books. Uh, you're you're off their, their their chart. Once you get off their chart, it's like get out of here. We don't want to see you anymore. And uh, I, I I it was it was bittersweet for me. And and then when I got I, I never got released uh, right home. Uh, I spent one, one the, the first day home, and then I had to go to a halfway house. But even even the halfway house, it, it felt good. <laughs> you know, it felt good. It's only a month. And after you've done a bit of time in, in, in prison, a month, you know, at one time used to seem like a long time, but when, when you're in jail, a month can be like a minute, you know. There's something happening here.